because the committee chose me as their chairman. The other party, um, they had to have a convention. And they had a convention, and the three people running it was the widow, it was Chauncey Croft, who was the senior senator, I mean, a senator from Anchorage, Ray Potter, and the National Thank Committee you. Chairman, Eden Otters. And they were the ones that had to be selected. And I would always say that the widow could beat me, and she could have. But she didn't win that first nomination, and she got so angry she gave all her votes to Imanati. And I still only won by 1,900 votes. That's not a big margin, because this was a Democrat state. And I ran the next time, and I've been running ever since, and I've been successful because of you. I want you to understand that. There are those in this room that don't support me, but that's your business. But there are those in this room that do support me, and because of your support, we've been able to go through two chairmanships, chairman of resources, chairman of transportation, and I'm one of the few, when we became a minority again, the land and the become the ranking member or the vice chairman of resources again. That gives... And I say that because this state has one Congress, only one. And the only power or strength that congressman has is the backing of his people or her people and the power to take and get things done through seniority. And I am proud of that fact. And I've delivered this for the state because of you. And I'll continue to do that as long as the Lord wants me to do that, as long as you vote for it. This is never personal. And I've told people, go ahead, try to beat me. Have at it. If you beat me, then that's the will of the people of the state of Alaska. That's a democracy. I've heard be hurt a little bit, but not much. Because I know what I've done and what I can do. But that's the decision of Alaskan voters and the people of this nation when they have an elective process. And so I welcome those that disagree with me, but I'll hug those that do agree with me. And with the, into my feelings of thank you. This is an interesting time we're in. Uh, as you know, uh, we have uh, uh, lots of challenges. We have a lot of challenges in this state, probably more than you realize. We're living and have lived off of one source of income for a considerable length of time. Uh, we have $38 billion in the bank. We have a dividend every year, every year for about $1,000. And by the way, I have to say, I don't like the idea of $38 billion in a coffee can. If you don't do something with that money, you're under jeopardy as a state, because every day I try, they say, what do you need it for? You're paying your people to live with. I asked the state legislature the other day, you asked, I asked them, I said, you answer me now. Tell me what we have done in 25 years that produces any new dollars. That's it. You know what, it's just like this room. It's dead quiet. Because they can't go through their minds and remember what they've done to encourage private investment, encourage a quicker permitting process to develop resources and refine a product. And that's the state role in this state because we as Hinkle Selly says in the state owned state. So I'm asking you to and think about that for a moment as you talk to your legislators. I was speaking to a group this morning, and this is an idea I have, and it's not a new idea, but I want you to, you know, I'm hoping somebody pick up some of these gyms and run them. Um, we have a brain drain in this state. Uh, we have students that are trying to go to school, and if they go and get into professions like doctors, and Lawyers, I hate to say that, but if they do that, <laughs> uh, they got a four or five hundred thousand dollar debt when they get out. And it's hard for them to pay that debt off in the state of Alaska. So they stay outside. And I'm suggesting that $38 billion, what better way can you spend those dollars than if a student from Alaska enrolls in a college and they occur that debt? but they graduate with the degree and the professionalism to do the job and they come back to the state and they stay eight years in a locality. That debt's forgiven. The brain comes back. It's not that much.
much money and you don't have that brain drain. That's something we can do and be very positive as far as the, the, the input is our dollars and the, the reception we have. I have one other one. Don't get on one of those snow moves, you break your leg. Um, and this is a little far-fetched, but I'm talking about what, what, I, what I see. We have a health problem in this state. Cost is going up. A lot of our people are not insured. And I, I, know, I want you to think about maybe, just maybe, if we set up a law that's voluntary, that if you were to take your permanent dividend check and use it as a premium for total health coverage, total, and they can't throw you out once you enter the program. I said, well, what are you talking about? I said, well, okay, let's say we got 600,000 people. We got 675,000 people. Let's say half of the people are going to do that. If you take a $1,000 premium, $1,000 dividend, $300,000, what is that? How many million dollars is that? How much? 30 million or a little more. As a premium. A little higher. As a premium, an insurance company will pick that up. Now, you ask, why would you do that? I'm suggesting what I'm doing is if we use the $38 billion for a, a, a showing that we understand those dollars are there that will benefit the people of Alaska and increase the retention of Alaska, we're so much better off. Well, all these are state issues. But the reason I'm bringing this up is between Ted Stevens and myself, Senator Stevens and Lisa Murkowski, we are the second largest economy in this state. And I'm proud of that, but having said I'd be here forever, that's not really true. <clears throat> Senator Stevens is going to leave us someday, and I'm going to leave you too. And it takes all those years to bring up that seniority to be able to achieve those goals. So we've got to start thinking on the state level and legislative level how we can close that gap between the federal dollars we've been getting than what we won't get. And I'll go back to one other thing. We've got to start thinking of our resources. I'd build us to sit in a dam in a heartbeat, which there's no market for. I'd build it in a heartbeat, let the state build it. I'd build it for two reasons. One is, it's right for the state. We electrify the state. And secondly, if you think about it, Mom, we could be the OPEC capital of the world for hydrogen gas. You think I'm doing smoking pot, I don't. But the truth of the matter is, we could be. Hydrogen gas, clean fuel. Because hydrogen is created by electricity and water. That's all it that is. And lastly, I, you know, I got a lot of criticism for the bridges of nowhere. And by the way, there's never been a bridge that ever went anywhere. <laughs> Including the Golden Gate Bridge, the Bay Bridge, you name it. Never went anywhere. Until you got to the other side, then it went somewhere. But I want to do something a little further in reaching this and the connect cross. And I had some Chinese engineers that came to me. And they show what they have done in the rivers and the tidal areas of China. Building bridges and using the pylons for generation. You can imagine eight pylons across the cross, eight turbines within the pylons. You can take and electrify that whole area of the range of the railway. That's something we have to start thinking about. The space got to think about those kind of things. It's sort of outside the box, but it's an area which I just want all of you in this room because you're interested, hopefully you'll have a, a, an opportunity to speak to your legislators, and you have an opportunity to speak to one another and try to achieve the goals that I think this state has to do. It doesn't affect me. You know, some of you are with me, Leo, I see in the room here, and Ed, and the rest of you. Uh, you know, life is like jumping out of an airplane. Not many of you have done that, but I did it once, I'll never do it again, especially with an airplane. Uh, the first 10,000 feet is a piece of cake. That last thousand goes real fast. And I'm in that last thousand, so I'm having a ball doing it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I will take a series of questions. And if you have any or comments or you know, tell me to drop that. But it doesn't matter. I'm not going to do that tonight anyway. Maybe later on down the line.